Hello, so this is going to be just a quick-ish one on texturing fiber effects. A couple of things that aren't so well documented and are pretty straightforward, so here goes. A quick fiber effects setup on this two-point polygon chain. I'm just adding a few additional fibers. I'm going to take out the fiber kink just to keep things nice and smooth. I'm also going to make them nice and chunky, about 10 centimeters in width. I'm going to turn off the shadows for the environment light and on the camera I'm just going to turn off adaptive sampling again just for efficiency. Here we are in the surface editor and as you can see a material has already been applied to our fiber for us and it's worth noting as well that this will be saved with the scene. I don't want a hair material though I want a principled BSDF so let's change there and open up the nodes. So this is what we have here I'm going to delete the hair node don't need that anymore. To save a bit of calculation, I'm also going to turn off the roughness and the spec. The downside to this is that OpenGL and fibers aren't a great combo. <laughs> so bear that in mind. Grab a fiber effects node. And we'll start off with a curve rather than a gradient. We'll take our fiber V into the input. And we're going to use the alpha here. I'm going to take that into the color of the principled. So quite simply, it's very much similar to a UV map. So we have fiber U left to right and fiber V bottom to top. So with that in mind, let's open up that curve node. I'm going to go to the alpha value here. And to demonstrate this, let's just add a couple of keys. So there, 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 and there. Turning off this keyframe icon here, we can now edit these between zero and one. So there we go, that's pretty self-explanatory. From zero to one on the fiber V, we're going in between a value of zero and one. So that's basically what fiber V does. And fiber U does exactly the same thing, but from left to right. So if we just take fiber U into the input, we have the same gradient along a different axis. But we're gonna do something else with the fiber U, so I'm gonna plug back in the fiber V. Now it turns out we also have access to these UVs using an object UV setting. So because we're mapping on a effectively a flat UV two dimensional surface, we want a 2D texture. So I'm gonna get the turbulence 2D here. Let's open up the turbulence and give it a little bit of contrast so we can see what's going on. So it's doing kind of what we'd expect on a planar mapping mode. But we want a UV setup here relevant to this object. And under mapping, there's this option here called object UV. Now that is basically mapping our texture to our fibers. So we could tweak that willy nilly. So by changing the tiling, we can change the look. Now you can see it's a little bit uniform, which is no good to us. But this is where this fiber effects node comes into play. Let's go for a random scalar. We're going to make use of the fiber number here as our seed. I'm going to take the output into the offset. Now we can experiment with the U or the V. That V is quite nice. And we can change up the range. We'll bring this all together. Let's get a multiply node. So those two are multiplied together. Let's get a mixer. A little bit of color. Now again, we want to mix up some of this. So let's get a color tool. Let's take the color into the color and nothing changes like that, but we're going to use this another random scalar. Same fiber number as the seed. Let's just take that out into the hue and there we go. So I think this is radians, isn't it? So perhaps minus three, three, that will cycle through the wheel. We can also change this seed by slapping in an add node. Stick a silly number in here, and that should do what we need on this front. While we're in the surface editor, there's a couple of things to note. And the first thing is that clipping doesn't work. So if we plug this black and white value into the clip, nothing happens, and we can tell this just by going to the environment light, and turning that back on. You could try going the transparency route, but I haven't had a great deal of luck using that with FiberFX. 
If you do want to shape this, you're much better off going into fiber effects. Under the width, go into the texture tab. Layer type, we will select gradient and the input parameter, we will choose fiber V. We can put zero in here and zero alpha in there. We'll add a key at the end and we'll bring the alpha back. That way we have control of the width on this slider. Add a couple more keys to shape further and then we've got all this lovely procedural stuff to play with. I've reset my fibers, I've got a little bit of random length but I've taken off the variable width and we're down to five fibers just to keep things simple. We've talked about 2D textures and how it has the object UV option. The nice thing about that is we can also use images. Let's get an image node, but let's delete all of this first. I've already loaded a couple of PBR image sets to demo. So for the image type, I've got a rope and I think it's the albedo here. Let's plug that in. Now, as we used in the 2D texture, let's open this up and for my mapping, I'm going to change that to object UV. So we immediately get results here, but let's go for a constant scalar. And we'll plug this into the tile of the V and we'll perhaps increase that just so they're not so stretched. So this is good to know that it works on a 2D surface like this. But what is just as handy, if we go to the fiber type in the fiber effects panel and we select solid, we've got a nice 360 degree pattern going on. So that means if we plug our other channels in, and here's a couple I prepared earlier, <laughs> and it's basically all the other channels, roughness, ambient occlusion, I've multiplied with the color, uh, a normal map. Remembering of course, to set normal maps to linear color space. So I have this scalar controlling that V option. And I have exactly the same setup for a cable material. I've also included this, the U setting here, although I don't think I really need it. Similar to before, I could take this fiber info node and add a random scalar, grab a color tool. Perhaps I'll change the brightness for this one because there's not a lot of color in there, so perhaps minus one is not the way to go. 0.2 to 0.8, something like that. Now it's all set up, we can all fiddle about for hours on end in this fiber effects window. So that is pretty much that. Thanks for listening. <laughs>